Hey guys and gals of the internet, it's Jay here with SteamForce.com and today we're going to be talking about the Talos Principle. For those of you who haven't already picked up on it, it's a first person puzzler set in a variety of worlds. More on that a bit later, but right now I need to explain something. No matter how hard some people will try to convince you, this is not very similar to either of the Portal games. Yeah, there are some similar puzzle mechanics, but those are present in just about every first person puzzler. The biggest difference here is not in the gameplay itself, but in the story. For the vast majority of Portal 2, the story, waking up in an abandoned testing facility, is a little more than a premise. In the Talos Principle, however, it is the most essential feature. Sure, you can play the whole time without thinking about it, but you're going to miss the majority of the game's substance. It's kind of like classic literature, it's more about what's not being said. Now, pretentious literary stuff aside, the Talos Principle starts you in a small area, kind of like this, but not exactly this. I didn't start recording until after, sorry. A booming voice is heard and is presented to you as the voice of God. Begin following it and start your puzzling adventure in a chamber much like this one. This is actually an early puzzle. Throughout the game, the voice asks you to contemplate certain aspects of the puzzles in a philosophical way, and it sort of pushes you towards the idea of an all-powerful deity by claiming that he has created everything for you, that this world is a palace built for you, etc, etc. All the while, however, the computer system left in the world tells the story of a universe that had once lived but suddenly perished. Through the accounts of files left on the computers and of the interesting conversations you can have with the computer's AI, you are asked one major question. What separates humans from machines? Furthermore, what reason do we have to believe that we are not machines ourselves and our gods are actually just inventors? It's a seriously hefty question, much more than the typical right or wrong things examined in most games. It's the glue that keeps the whole game together. Let's look at one now. Though Stratton himself never used the term, his remark about the inescapable materiality of life, that, like the bronze giant Talos, even the most faithful philosopher cannot live without his blood, ultimately became known as the Talos Principle. What seemingly enraged many of his contemporaries and a significant number of later thinkers is the principle's simplicity and unassailability, which, according to a fragment found in Miletus, cut through their rhetorical webs which sought to tangle the listener with fanciful words and thoughts of the heavens, like Alexander's sword through the Guardian knot. This is one of a handful of the more heavy-handed notes that can be found in the computers, while some are more subtle and still others draw parallels to modern society from the fall of the Roman Empire. It's eerie, it's honest, and it's intense. On to a bit of a lighter subject then. The puzzle mechanics are fantastic. All of the puzzle pieces are pretty self-explanatory and straightforward, although sometimes you're forced to use them in highly unexpected ways. That's when they get difficult because we can all use the same light reflector or cube or jammer or whatever you want to talk about to construct the same pattern from point A to point B. But what the Talos Principle asks us to do, however, is to reimagine the way we use it every time we use it. You can never really master any element because the element is always changing in clever ways and that's that's really the greatness of the game. The challenge is always changing. Even in the hub world there are puzzles. For example, and I won't show this right now because of spoilers, there's an extra item you can get in one of the hubs, a star, and it's hidden in this hub, not in the puzzle. It's not just hiding in a bush either. You gotta use some logic, some reasoning, and occasionally even the internet to figure it out. Oh yeah, another important thing. A lot of extra puzzles are hidden in hexadecimal writing found in notes or translation, etc, etc, etc. The puzzles never stop. They simply elevate far, far above our heads. Note that you're not seeing any of the solutions to hard puzzles, because spoilers, and also they take like 20 minutes sometimes. The world is broken down into three large sections. Each section contains a themed set of chambers, and within each chamber are the puzzles set in a large space. Crow Team was smart to put in a bunch of signposts indicating which pieces you'd unlocked, where they are, etc., to keep them all in line. Quality organization of quality puzzles. Let's talk about the engine now. It is fantastic. It's, it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. What it lacks in soft lighting, it makes up for with the sharpest textures I have ever seen. Seriously, you can get up close and it stays beautiful. The art itself is incredible and the worlds are vast and detailed. Almost every statue is missing its head, and fellow English majors, I too freaked out at this, so interpret that as you will. The engine is quite well optimized with very little loading, but in case you're worried, you can take the game from CryEngine level down to 1997 AAA level. Using so many video settings, your head will start spinning. No matter your computer, you should be able to run this game. You have no excuse! Sound is usually an afterthought in puzzle alerts. All they ever really do is toss some casual music and let the player go to town. But it's clear that Crow Team really put some effort into sound design. 
The music is absolutely breathtaking and the sound effects are crisp. The voice of God is rich and exactly as you would imagine it with, albeit, a strange deficiency of Morgan Freeman. There's actually some DLC available that unlocks the full soundtrack in four different DRM-free formats, and I bought it all within 30 minutes of starting the game. I'm not proud of myself. So, to recap. It's challenging in a very enjoyable way, and to an extreme extent if that's what you want, or to a minimal level if that's what you want. It's brilliantly designed, and the themes it examines will give your classic literature 407 professor a small heart attack. It's beautiful to your eyes and ears, too. All in all, the Talos Principle is the best game I have ever played. 5 out of 5. Bravo, Crow Team. Bravo.